and welcome back to the Metasked podcast. I am your host, Abby Rose Esposito, Senior Marketing Strategist at Metasked. Today, I'm joined by Elliot and Stacy Shearing. Elliot is a 21-year-old individual with Down syndrome who has volunteered to share his story along with his mother. Stacy and Elliot are learning about Down syndrome regression, a little-known condition that results in a significant change in mental acuity around Elliot's age. They're here to advocate for more research and education about this condition, as well as discuss the conundrum they're currently in as they figure out next steps now that Elliot is no longer eligible to receive services at school. Elliot is one of 5 million people in the United States who cannot rely on speech alone to be heard and understood. So for the first time, we are recording this podcast with video as well. The video format will be available on YouTube. So Elliot and Stacy, thank you so much for being here. Oh my gosh, thank you for I having appreciate us. It. We so appreciate it. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yes. So Elliot, we want to get to know you first. So could you and your mom share a little bit about yourselves? What are some of the your favorite things to do? What are some of your goals? That kind of stuff. Yes, we are happy to do that. Um, so Elliot's 21. He is the youngest of our three children. Um, he has a 26-year-old sister named Jordan. She is a special education teacher in Corning, New York. Um, he also has a 23-year-old sister named Chloe, and she's an occupational therapist in Newark Wayne County Nursing Home, <laughs> and she also works at Thompson Hospital. Um, so he's wow. impacted. Um, yeah, so you're all involved. Huge. It's amazing. It's <laughs> yes. so great to have such a good circle of support. It is. So we have lots of extra, extra help, for sure, with uh, siblings. Um, Elliot... Uh, graduated from Holy Childhood this past June. He was there since first grade. Well, congratulations. <laughs> That's so exciting. That was exciting. Um, it was, he worked really hard for a lot of years. The school w- was wonderful. Um, it was a great, a great place for him to be for quite some time. Um, so he graduated from Holy Childhood once the regression started because the program that he was in really was a little bit too advanced. He mm-hmm. was struggling um, had quite a, quite a breakdown at one point. So we, we had to remove them from the program. Um, it was a lot with COVID obviously that did a lot of restrictions because the, the program that he was in had, um, where they, where they would go out into the community and do jobs and such. And, um, everything was shut down right. and <laughs> it yeah. just was, it was really tough. Um, so we removed him from that and he graduated once he graduated. Now he attends Cobblestone um, art Center over in Farmington, and that is an adult day have program that focuses on arts and music and dance and theater. Cool. It's a really cool place. <laughs> How do you like it? Do you like Cobblestone? Do you like your friends over at Cobblestone? You dance and do music? Huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. Nice. It's better than... <laughs> Than what we were doing. Good. <laughs> that's for sure. He gets on the bus now with, with much more of a smile. So Good. that's that's a positive thing. Um, so Elliot lives with myself. Um, I am a medical laboratory technologist. I work at a local doctor's office. I've been there for 23 years. Um, so I've been there forever. And uh, my husband, Jeff, uh, his dad, he works for John Deere equipment, um, does construction equipment. Um, so his, you know, sister's no longer reside at home. It's just the three of us. Yep. <laughs> he has a dog and <gasps> named Larry and Larry. a cat <laughs> named Murphy. Right. Wow. So we stay busy. Um, he, so Elliot was born with Down syndrome. Um, when he was five months old, he had a heart repair, uh, it was an atrial ventricular repair and, Then at 10 months old, he had what they call an annular pancreas repair. So he's had two, he had two huge surgeries his first year of life. Um, After that, he's had several minor surgeries, you know, tonsils and ear tubes, eye tubes and all kinds of crazy things, tonsils out. Um, And by the age of six, I had noticed he just wasn't developing like my network of friends with other children with Down syndrome, his speech was not Mm -hmm. coming. Things where I was like, I think he might be autistic. So we put him in a research study at Strong because, you know, 20 years ago, there wasn't a lot about autism. You know, I mean, it was just kind of getting the diagnosis and such. So we were able to do that. Um, We put him in a research study and yes, he ended up being classified with autism. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
Um, some of Elliot's things prior to his regression, his favorite things that he was doing, he's always been very active. Like, you know, I've shared videos with you about him yeah. jumping and dancing and always silly. Um, he loves to boat. He loves basketball. He loves to go camping. Um, he has an adult tricycle that he loves to ride. Um, we do horseback riding. Ooh. He is really good at darts and pinball. Um, yeah, you're he's, athletic. Yeah, he's very <laughs> athletic. Yeah, he was very athletic. Um, ping pong, swimming, bowling, loves music, loves his iPad. They used to. <laughs> this is all things that prior to the regression that he was doing. Um, and of course, he loves to shop. He's got two older sisters that <laughs> who does it, you know, <laughs> instilled that very well. Um, so and when for relaxing time, you know, he used to like to watch his movies and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, as of late, we've lost a lot of those skills. You know, there yeah. we are back to uh, learning a lot of things over again. We we have lost our ability to feed ourselves. Um, he still can use the bathroom independently, but just needs assistance, reminding, getting him in, mm -hmm. helping him with his pants and such. Um, he, but he's doing better. I mean, he's trying, at least he's trying. And, you know, it's been a long journey of searching of what was going on. <laughs> yeah. 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 So for our listeners who probably haven't heard of Down syndrome regression, because yes. I hadn't before I met you. Right. Um, could you explain what you've learned about it? And yeah. So one of the first things that I found was a checklist. I got involved on Facebook. There was a social media page for mm -hmm. people with Down syndrome regression disorder. A lot of parents explaining, you know, potential treatments, that sort of thing. Um, I came across a checklist and and a podcast actually <laughs> from oh, great. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Santoro. Um, the podcast was fascinating. Like we, when we, when my husband and I heard it, we were like, his checklist for all of this. Um, so one of the, some of the reported symptoms that they found were social withdrawal from friends and family, which was we were, we got to a point we couldn't get him out of bed. Mm -hmm. You know, he was in the dark a lot, didn't want to get up, couldn't get him on the bus, um, lost or diminished language. We already had that anyway. So that was, but he would babble, like he would always try, he would try to speak. You know, um, sometimes it would just be hard to understand him, um, but he would try to at least do that interaction with us. Um, he also had a, a voice box. You know, he has a, a software at home hmm. that works with pictures and stuff to help mm -hmm. him speak and make choices. So, um, but he completely stopped using that as well. Um, and the other things is loss of previously acquired developmental milestones. So, which we had made so many and he was doing so well um and gone like just completely diminished um they also i mean elliot was already diagnosed with autism but they are finding that the kids with the regression disorder have a tendency to also be dually diagnosed and have the autism as Got well it. which would be decreased eye contact decrease of empathy and emotion um anger and frustration uh behavioral outbursts uh repetition of body movements like ticks you know those mm -hmm. were things that we were seeing or extra movements that were not purposeful um anorexia Elliot's lost almost 20 pounds since we've oh. been going through this mm -hmm. so um that's been probably one of the toughest things for me because he's always been very yeah. fit and strong yeah. and muscular and we've lost a lot of tone um unfortunately with with COVID um everything went virtual yeah so nobody stayed in shape. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And the services were tough. He was falling asleep. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't participating. I have a nonverbal kid in a yeah. classroom that can't even talk and participate with his classmates. Right. Yeah. So it was it was tough. Um, insomnia, difficulty sleeping. That's he's always had that. But uh, again, you know, it's a struggle. <laughs> yeah. To, yeah. You know, that's always been, though. Um, and of course, of, the obsessive compulsive um, thoughts and activities, you know, those are some of, those are just some of the things that we learned about listening to this podcast where we were like, Oh my gosh, this is, yeah. this is him, you know? Yeah. So 
Yeah. 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 So you've been advocating for more research and education about Down syndrome regression. Yes. What are you hoping that our listeners and others who spread the message will learn about it? I do feel that it's imperative that parents and caregivers of individuals with Down syndrome be told about this disorder. I mean, it's not a disorder that's been talked about much because it's new, you know? So I think it was like 2018. I had read someplace that was like the first of being where they were doing research and trying to figure out, you know, what is going on with these kids. You know, they, unfortunately there's things that they've been treating for are like major depression, um, bipolar, you know, a lot of psychiatric, you know, stuff that, and I kept telling the doctors every time I would go to a different one (laughs) that it's difficult to explain to somebody that didn't know Elliot before this happened. Right. You know, all I have are videos to show and say, this is what he was. This is where we are. And, you know, to, there's, there's so many other links with Down syndrome. There's Alzheimer's. Like that's Mm -hmm. another big thing that can happen. So to diagnose this, disorder is difficult. Um, They feel that it is an autoimmune disorder. A lot of the kids that have this, um, it's, they have something called Hashimoto's encephalopathy and it is a thyroid um, condition. So Elliot does have hypothyroidism. So of course I went immediately to, lots of his sister has it. His grandma has it. (laughs) (laughs) My daughter has Hashimoto's. So it's like, we're very familiar with it. Um, And to learn about all these, these things with Down syndrome regression has been, it's been a really wild ride. And being medical, I of course have like poured myself into it because I, it's fascinating yeah. to me. So we had him tested for the Hashimoto's. It came back negative. We, you know, it wasn't a problem. Um, good, you know, good news. We, he has psoriasis. That's also an autoimmune disease. And so we were immediately like, well, it's got to be some kind of inflammatory thing because I have this child that is looking at me. He's clinically depressed. Yes. Yeah. But I think he's depressed because he can't do what he was doing before. He has a tremor. He feels weak. He has anxiety. Like all these things that he never had are now peaking. And of course, I get Prozac. I get lorazepam. I get all these, you know, drugs that are being pushed upon him that basically now are even, I felt, numbing him even more Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So when I heard about this IVIG therapy, it was really fascinating to think that, you know, we can give him a human product. It's IG, it's a antibody. It's, it's the good antibody that helps to attack the bad ones that are attacking his body. Yeah. So when I got through all the testing, he had to have a spinal tap. <clears throat> they did that. They did lots of blood work. Um, and they wanted to do an MRI of his brain, but we were unable to do that. He has a pacemaker lead in his heart from his open heart when he was a baby. So we weren't able to get a good picture of Mm -hmm. his brain um, to see if there was inflammation, but all of his inflammatory markers came back normal. Um, So at that point, the immunoneurologist who we were so lucky to, it, it was a whim of being able to really meet her because he was phasing out of 18 all of his behavioral doctors at Kirsch were, <clears throat> one was retiring. He'd had all along. He's over 18. They really don't treat peds anymore. Mm-hmm. Complex care centers that I was getting referred to were full. They weren't mm-hmm. taking new patients. The psychiatrists were not calling me back. Like, we, it was horrible. We're just trying to find some help. Like, we didn't know what yeah. was going on with him. So to get, um, finally, we were directed through his doctor at, um, Kirsch Center. After I had heard the podcast, I reached out to him and I said, listen, do we have anybody at Strong who is doing research on this IgG therapy for Down syndrome regression disorder? We really feel this is what Elliot has. And I'm at this point ready to go to California. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to take him there and, you know, seek out Dr. Santoro. Yeah. Um, so we uh, ended up getting hooked up with uh, a neuroimmunologist at Strong. 
and she did all of the the steps that was necessary. Um, of course, insurance denied our first round of gamma the therapy for yeah. gamma globulin because it's so new. Because it's so new, yeah. and um, not clinically proven yet. Yeah. So uh, she did go to bat, did a face to face, and was able to get the approval to wow. go through. So that was amazing. And That's incredible. Yeah. It is incredible. So we had our first infusion actually the 24th of last month. We had three separate ones um, Oof. for his starter dose. They're tough. They take two to three hours to do. But it's not so fun. <laughs> you know, it takes two to three hours for the infusions, right? You have been through a lot, my friend. It has been. Um, is it helping? It is. Yeah. Like, um, it's hard, you, you know, here he's... Right, going to be even more quiet. I'm a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be even more quiet. But yeah, remarkably, last year or this past the the break here that we just had for Easter, he was home all week, and my husband was home doing some things with him, and he got up and put his shoes on, went outside, played basketball, which wow. is the first time in two years that he has made any effort to even make a choice of something like that. So that was really amazing. And we had some beautiful weather. So he played basketball yeah. every day by himself independently. We took a bike ride and took his dog for a walk the other day. And that was the first he'd been on his bike. And so you have been enjoying this nice weather. Me too. You like the sunshine, right? We got a few more days of good, nice weather. So got to make good use of it. That's going to get cold again. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So, but yeah, so like, is it working? Yes. Is it going to take a lot of time? My understanding is four to six months before okay. you see a true turnaround. And how often do you do these? Right now it's once a month okay. and he'll go um, two days at the end of the month for the infusion um, he, because of his cardiac issues. They feel that it, you can, it's a lot of fluid for him to take in. So they mm -hmm. are pacing it out. Got it. A little bit for him. So he gets the two infusions. He feels like garbage after he has them. Yeah. Um, I, I like to think it's because the good antibodies are attacking the bad antibodies. It's almost like he gets flu-like symptoms. Okay. So, um, but Elliot had gotten sick. Oh, he got sick in November and February this year and ended up in the hospital both times. He had huh. the flu one time and then he had... Um, that norovirus and he that got, is horrible. It was awful. He got so dehydrated um, that you know he had to go in for fluids. Oh. So that knocked him. You know, it was like every time we started making Man. these times, like he would get knocked down. Can't with catch a, a break. I know. And we started physical therapy about four months ago with a wonderful PT that's local to us. She's amazing with him. Um, so it's been nice to see him building some qualities back up with that. We actually have an occupational therapy evaluation later today Ooh. so we're hoping to you know get him back in for that and, yeah you know start yeah to get some more positivity of yeah. what he can do because we've lost a lot that was something yeah. else that we lost a lot of was yeah. his confidence in yeah. himself well I'm glad to hear you're finding some joy in getting outside we are that um good the other thing I was going to mention too um as far as educating others yeah. about all of this is there's so many signs that looking back now that we had from Elliot that if I would have hindsight known, yeah. one of the biggest things is they, they associated this regression disorder with trauma. Like, and what is trauma to our kids though? Right. I have a nonverbal child. He can't come home and tell me, you know, we had a yucky lunch today. You yep. know, this person didn't talk very nice to me. You know, we, we don't know every day I've handed my son off to strangers yeah. with my fingers crossed that, you know, yeah. positive things happen. So, you know, his sisters graduated from college and moved out. They feel that that was, you know, and, and these are life things that happen that we can't prevent, but there are other things that we can modify yeah. in their day to maybe, accommodate for those losses so yeah. he lost his sisters he had a therapy dog that passed away uh, that was really hard that is for both of us the worst it was the worst um he 
had a an aide on his bus with him that had been with him for 15 years who broke her leg. Oh, <laughs> she no. was unable to come back. So that was oh. really hard for him. Um, graduating, you know, just yeah. like what he is comprehending about not being back with his peers, you yeah. know. Um, so those are all things that looking back on now, we are like, well, we have no control over this. But when Elliot was refusing to get on the bus and we were forcing him to go and then we would get him there and then they would call and say, we can't get him off the bus and then mm-hmm. have to bring him home. And, you know, yeah. he was so defeated. Like he'd get off yeah. the bus and you could tell, you know, and I just kept telling him, I said, we're going to try to, we're going to find something else for you to do. It's just, we need time. I mean, I have a job, right? God has a job. We have to go to them. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, so, but it has made me go back yeah. now. I'm, I'm, I've reduced my hours at my, job now um so yeah. I'm more available to be able to accommodate where where I need to you know I mean I'm not going to force him and push him into things again to yeah. further push the regression yeah. <laughs> you know yeah yeah wow so school services yes. typically stop at 21 correct what is your plan for the future what options are available to you guys So we actually just had our last CSE meeting the other day. Um, That was that was quite interesting um, to be done with that after 21 years. Wow. (laughs) You know, of of meeting with many wonderful people. Um, Holy Childhood was great. Like I said, it was it was quite a a wonderful place um, for him to be. Are we boring you? (laughs) <laughs> you gonna take a nap <laughs> these <laughs> chairs are pretty comfy they are very comfortable <laughs> they are super comfortable um let me get to back to that question oh when school ends yes 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 so it's another world <laughs> with with school and individuals with disabilities a lot of a lot of programs have stopped um you know yeah. there used to be a lot of day have programs ARC used to have, they just don't offer things anymore. So the state has gone to a program called self-direction Yeah, of which we've been in now for about four years. It's a great program. I, I do like it. It's great that we can hire our own staff. Yeah. Um, it's great that um, we can join clubs and organizations and we have the funding to be able to do yeah. that. That's huge. Yeah. You know, there's obviously categories in his budget. Um, you know, he went from a budget of about sixty thousand dollars as a school age student to like a hundred and ten thousand dollar budget as an adult, which seems like, wow, this is like a tremendous amount of money, and it, and it is. Um, but the big thing is, we have to have a team. There's a financial intermediary there's a care coordinator and there's a broker. I love my team. I have a beautiful team. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones, but it, the shortage of the people that are doing the jobs, it's hard for people yeah. to even get yeah. into self-direction. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a, yeah. a struggle. We live in Naples, mm-hmm. beautiful country. We love it there. My husband and I grew up there. We, we, raised our children there. We can't say enough about it. The school has been amazing. They've offered opportunities to Elliot that most schools never would have done. And they've worked with us very well. Um, So I feel extremely grateful for all of that. Um, But like with the budget now, we have like, we're allotted like $3,000 a year for gas mileage reimbursement. So, and we can't use it for doctor's visits. We can't like, there's these stipulations that are like difficult, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Um, We, you know, as he comes into an adult now, um, they said, you know, oh, well, you can charge him rent because we obviously have an adult who is not going to have a job, who is not going to have health insurance, who is not, you know, they're, not going to be able to go on and and have their own apartment necessarily self-direction is designed so that yes you can like Mm -hmm. you can now but elliot needs 24-hour care so what do i do if i have him in an apartment someplace and Mm -hmm. my person calls and says hey i can't make it (laughs) you know 
So, you know, being 21, you know, and having the self-direction, I do feel like there is going to be more opportunities opening for him, but we have to now gain back, you know, some of our losses and hopefully we'll be able to gain that back. I mean, does the tough thing with, with this regression disorder now is we don't, we don't know treatment. Mm -hmm. It's we're guinea pigs in this cycle. Um, And, you know, of course, after the first few sets of infusions and I saw how yucky he felt, I was like, Oh, is this the right thing? Am I doing the right thing for him? You know, because we are guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I was like, we have, we, what other choices do we have right now? You know, mm-hmm. I'm not, I, I want him to be outside. I want him to enjoy his life. Yeah. I want him to meet people. Um, just like we do for any of our kids, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to set the bar so high anymore like I had been that so that he feels defeated in any accomplishments. You know, I yeah. want him to feel like everything he's doing is an accomplishment because it is. Yeah. Every day he is making huge strides in one way, shape or form. Um, so yeah. just to get him back would would be a beautiful thing. And like I said, we are seeing some promising. At least we can even get him out and about now. I mean, we had a, we had a time we couldn't even get him out of bed. Yeah. You just sit in the dark. Yeah. So very sad. Yeah. And yeah. not knowing why has just been so hard. And my biggest thing is I've just been wanting to get people to understand that this is out there. There's potential treatments. It's difficult to diagnose. You know, like I said, we, we've had everything from behavioral therapists to, you know, trying to find a psychiatrist, which we never did. Um our general practitioner, he's been great because he just listens to me and (laughs) helps me, you know, go, okay, yes, we can do this, you know? Yeah. And we're fortunate. I mean, he's not, he's not difficult. He doesn't lash out. He's not completely an angry, you know, he's just very relaxed. Yeah. (laughs) I see that. (laughs) And we just want to see him come back to life you know we want we miss him dancing and singing and doing spontaneous things that he used to do yeah yeah um but I do think that you know with school ending um that it's going to almost be better for him that we're going to be able to do better matches for him now and not have to feel like well we had to send him to school because the school's saying that we have to send him to school (laughs) right (laughs) you know yeah we can start adulting and we can start living life a little bit more I like you know I want to get him volunteering in our community last year he did some we have a little wayside market uh Joseph's wayside market and he was going down and helping you know deadhead some of the plants and watering and you know things like that yeah. he you know he yeah. loves those those sorts of things yeah more quiet and yeah independent so right now it's probably pretty tough for him to communicate what he wants to be doing. Very. So you're at the point where you're just kind of going based off of what he liked before. Yes. So, or seeing if we can get that through. I mean, he used to be like in a bowling league. Yeah. He used to love to go bowling. Um, that was our big winter activity, you know? Yeah. Uh, we've tried multiple times to get him skiing, but he just does not care about skiing at all whatsoever. Me neither. You know, we're pretty similar. <laughs> Um, it's cold it's wet (laughs) yeah yeah we uh there's a program up at one of our little ski resorts that's really great it's a youth uh ski club at hunt hollow and they provide free skiing opportunities um for kids with disabilities or financial you know difficulties to give them the opportunity well the the last couple years we've gotten sleds to be able to take the kids out and so we're hoping that you know, maybe now, you know, we, we didn't yeah. do it this year for obvious reasons. We didn't want to startle him because yeah. he, he does it's have been a tough more year. Anxiety. It's been a tough year. He's got yeah. a lot more anxiety than what he used to have. So, um, but maybe next year, you know, maybe yeah. next year we can get him on that slot and maybe he'll enjoy that. So we just keep trying new things. You know, he, like I said, he does enjoy it outside except for the cold. I said, we'll have to pack up the RV and go away for two months next winter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds so good to me. Warm, right? <laughs> right on. Go someplace warm. Find a beach. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> well, as advocates, do you have any information from your experiences that you'd like to share with other individuals and families that can help them in their journey? Yeah. Um, so one of the big things, you know, it's funny, I, technology sometimes makes me nuts, you know, like yeah. there's so much with phones and, mm -hmm. you know, seeing people on them all the time and that sort of thing. But I got to say, without technology, I would have never found out the information yeah. or the support groups that I found. I'm so grateful for the support groups I found on Facebook. You know, I mean, yeah. that was, that was huge for me, um, to be able to get the knowledge, to yeah. be able to go advocate for him and figure things out. Um, podcasts, obviously, you know, that yeah. was, that was huge. That was, that was the light that went off for us. So, you know, we, I did spend a probably way too much time on the internet researching, but I did find out a lot of information. So, you know, we, we do have that beautiful resource. I have made it a point to always talk to Elliot, no matter what, you know, I mean, I don't always get a lot of feedback, but he understands yeah. so much. And I'm trying to be very respectful now of his space. And I can, you know, tell by the way he looks at me sometimes just with his eyes of, when he's had enough and, you know, when we need to keep trying harder. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I told him I said, I'll never stop believing in you. And I will, we will do whatever it takes to make sure that we can get you to a better place all the time. So, um, you know, I guess I can tell parents that, you know, if it doesn't you know, feel right in your gut, it, probably isn't you know I mean there was a lot of doctors that just were so focused on telling me that he was just clinically depressed and I'm like he is but there's a reason why he's clinically right. depressed this just doesn't happen I mean in eight months my son became a shell of himself mm -hmm. and it was a horrible thing to watch um but I do you know have hope I'm not afraid now to ask for help. <laughs> you know, I, I do, you know, parents need to ask for help when yeah. they need it for sure. Um, go to your schools, go to your doctors, doctors, please become aware <laughs> of this disorder mm -hmm. so that we can find the right resources for them. Schools. Oh my gosh. Like Holy Childhood, they, they have 85% of their children there have Down syndrome you need to know about Down syndrome right. regression disorder. You yeah. need to educate the families. And when you, when the schools and the teachers, they have our children the best eight hours of their day, right? Yeah. So if you're starting to see them pull back and doing things, you need to reach out and let us know because mm -hmm. we don't know. I have a son that, you know, I can, I ask him every day when he comes home, did you have a good day? What did you do? Yeah. Every day. And I just keep hoping one of these days he's going to tell me <laughs> and I will always ask, but, yeah. um, you know, we need to keep talking to them and we need to just reassure them constantly, you know, that there's going to be more and there needs to be more awareness. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there that you can reach out to for support and find yeah. that. So yeah, as, as much ugly in the world as it seems there is right now, sometimes there's also definitely a lot of positive beauty. You know, there yeah. are some people out there that are remarkable to bring yeah. us all up together. So yeah. that's the biggest thing, I think. Wow. Right. You have a lot of friends. We have a beautiful community that adore him. Um, that's the really nice thing about small towns. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah for sure. <laughs> I post videos constantly of his yeah. improvements and his successes. And, you know, yeah. I'll have two, 300 people, you know, cheering uh, him on. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing. Well, I'm one of them now. <laughs> I'm very excited to hear how all of this goes. Me too. Me too. Like I said, we're only into the first, first round of treatment, but I think I have high hope. Oh, I have high hopes that, you know, like I said, just seeing him put his shoes on and go out and play basketball was just like, oh my yeah, God. yeah. <laughs> this is working. Yeah, <laughs> this it's is amazing. Working, you know? Well, thank you so much for coming in. I'm sure this is not the most fun thing you could be doing. <laughs> thank you, don't mind but... very much. Hey, can you say hello? You were having a tired day today. He did have a rough night of sleep last night. Mm. Uh, 
so I think you're very tired. Yeah. Well, please keep us posted. We will. Absolutely. We are cheering you on. Thank you. Thank you. And maybe, maybe we can come back with your, with your tech device and your talk chat and we can get you going and wanting to do that again. Yeah. And share that. Yeah. Because that's a pretty remarkable thing for kids to have, you know, kids with autism and, you know, yeah. Down syndrome, all of them. They, it's, it's really cool how some of them have become successful with yeah. sharing their thoughts and their emotions. So Yeah. Yeah. I thing. look forward to someday hearing all about how you've been feeling through all this. So, you know, we went to PT the other day and we were taking a little hike in the woods and we came back down and all of a sudden he just threw himself on the ground and rolled down the grassy hill. (laughs) And we were like, thinking like he tripped and fell. (laughs) And he jumps up and he was like, Hey, and I was like, that, that's the stuff he used to do. Like that's, he was always so silly. He's always acting out a movie or something in his head. And, um, so just to see those moments coming back are, are, are really awesome. So I, my fingers are so crossed that will continue this path. Yeah. 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 I think it will. I think so too. I think Good. so too. Like I said, today, I just know we're very tired because this lack of sleep last night and the hour right over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <In the sunshine. laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. have been crazy. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having us. I so appreciate you sharing your words. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs>